What's going on guys, Akko here, and today we are going to talk about how to play charge characters in Street Fighter 6. Now this is a topic that I've gotten a lot of questions on because there are a lot of really cool charge characters in this game, and if this is your first Street Fighter or your first time trying to try a charge character, they might seem a little intimidating at first, but I'm here to tell you that they're really not as bad as you might think. So let's go ahead and jump right on into how to play these charge characters. So to get started, let's go ahead and quickly go over the basics. So what is a charge character? A charge character is any character that has moves that require you to hold a certain direction in order to activate it. Usually this will either be hold back for two seconds and then hit forward and a punch button or kick button. And then there's also the hold down for two seconds and then a hit up and punch button or a kick button, depending on the character. This is obviously quite different from traditional characters who usually just do a sequence of inputs to quickly get their special moves out. The reason charge characters even exist in the first place is because it gives the developers the ability to put in special moves that are incredibly strong, but cannot be used, you know, back to back to back. Take Guile, for example, right? Everybody knows how ridiculously strong his sonic boom is. And, you know, it's a projectile that you can, you know, slowly walk behind to almost always take advantage of the match. Now, imagine if Guile could walk towards you and throw sonic booms. You know, that would be pretty crazy. I mean, that, that has happened in the past and, and it was extremely crazy. But anyway, that's part of the reason why these charge characters exist because it, it gives them access to crazy moves that have a slight limitation on them. But that limitation is not that bad because there are a lot of ways to charge. And also at the end of the day, which is also another very obvious thing, charge moves are very easy to input. Whereas, you know, Ryu again, he has to do quarter circle forward heavy punch. Uh, with Guile, on the other hand, I am basically only doing one input. I'm holding down back and then hitting forward and punch. And that's giving me my sonic boom. So the fact that you don't even need a clean input, down back works as well. So when I'm doing down back, I can either answer a jump in with my flash kick or stop someone's approach with my sonic boom. And that is kind of like the beauty of a charge character is they are somewhat more simplistic in the, you know, natural neutral sense while usually having pretty strong tools that are kind of hard to stop. The other benefit to playing charge characters is that they, they sort of teach you a sort of patience that doesn't come from other characters. Due to the fact that in the back of your mind, you're always thinking about either holding back or holding down back, this is naturally going to make you a bit more patient as you usually cannot just fire off your moves back to back to back. You need to, you know, buffer them. You need to wait a second. And this is another little small little benefit that comes from playing these charge characters because you can't just, you know, quickly do your moves back to back, you do need to take that little second to charge. So now that we understand the basics of how charge characters work, let's start talking about how to actually play them in the neutral space, the most important space in a Street Fighter game. Charge characters in neutral are both simple and complicated at the same time. The main reason being is your opponent is going to be fully aware that you are a charge character and they're going to be aware of when you're charging. So in a situation like this, if I'm just sitting here on down back, as we showed with Guile before, the opponent knows that I now have access to both a fast fireball and an invincible uppercut at the same time. So it's likely that they are not going to just, you know, engage with me at this point because they can clearly see that I am charging. But the good thing is there are many, many ways around that. And we basically call that hiding your charge. There are many, many different ways to hide your charge but we're gonna go over what I think are the best ones. We'll start with the first and simplest way, and that is to simply jump. Anytime you jump, that is gonna give you plenty of time to get your charge going. It is a great way to control space without giving away the fact that you are actually charging. This works even better with characters with more floaty jumps because it almost guarantees that by the time you hit the ground, more than enough time has passed for you to actually charge that input and get your special move out. Another great method for hiding your charge, and which is also one of my personal favorites, is to whiff buttons. Uh, it may sound crazy to whiff buttons on purpose, but if you're at a certain range where you don't feel like you can be whiff punished, uh, it can be a great way to both control space and to somewhat mask the fact that you are in fact charging. 
uh, one of the biggest benefits to this is that if you're whipping a button, you know, it's going to stop you from actually moving backwards. So you can safely hold back, you know, whip a button and prevent yourself from simply walking out of your desired range. Like if you're a character like DJ who wants to hold on to this, you know, nice mid range so you can take care of, you know, jumps and, you know, incoming buttons and stuff like that. Whipping buttons yourself is a great way to keep yourself in place while still being able to get that charge and not lose your positioning. And of course, a lot of these characters have moves that are designed to do that for you. This is very character specific, but a lot of characters have moves that are strictly designed for this, such as DJ Slide. One of the main purposes of DJ having a slide is so that he can advance while charging. So anytime you do the slide, once the animation is over, enough time usually has already passed for you to be able to do one of your charge moves. So most charge characters have a move like this that allows you to not only close the gap, but get your charge at the same time. And of course, Guile is one of the best examples of this with his back heavy kick. And closing out the neutral section, I wanted to go ahead and quickly talk about a slightly more advanced strategy. Uh, this one might take a little bit of practice before you can get it down. So if you can't do it right away, don't worry about it. It's just one of those things you have to, you know, get used to in training mode, but you can do what is known as a double charge. One thing about this game and most Street Fighter games in general is that the game has what's called a buffer window on your inputs. That means that there is there's a pretty generous window where the game will literally store your inputs in order to help you get your special moves out. And with charge characters, you can use this to your advantage to get a double charge going. So let's say that I want to do DJ's fireball, but I want to be ready for an up kick in case the opponent jumps, right? I want to be able to get that up kick out as soon as possible. On paper, it would seem like since because I have to hit forward, you know, I'm going to lose time on my down charge. Well, that's where the buffer comes in. In reality, you can actually hit forward, down, back, and then punch. And believe it or not, if you do this fast enough, you will still get your fireball input. If you look at my controller at the bottom, you can see that I'm very quickly hitting forward and then down, back, punch and that is quickly giving me access to a second charge. So the moment that fireball is blocked or is whiffed, I am already ready to do my up kicks or I could even do another fireball if I wanted to. Again, this technique is a little more advanced and it's kind of difficult to do if you haven't practiced it, but it's something that I would definitely recommend trying to get down if you're serious about playing charge characters. So what about combos? How do we handle combos with charge characters? Well, this is another area where they are both easier and potentially more difficult than a normal character but overall i would say a lot easier now of course if if you've done you know guile's trials and stuff like that there are some really crazy you know highly demanding highly execution heavy charge combos out there but the thing is you don't need to do those like basic charge combos are effective and they're very easy and i would argue they're easier than regular combos again using ryu as an example if i land some jabs right there i was trying to get my dp out but i accidentally hit forward an extra time so i got super you know i think that's a, a very simple example of how easy it is to mess up something like a dp input it has to be perfectly clean or you might get a super right well, compare that to a charge character where with DJ, all I want is my up kick so I can corner carry. All I gotta do is hold down and boom, it's literally one input. And the reason charge character combos are easy is because this combo right here, this is your best confirm off of a jab and I'm holding down anyway. This is, this is the same thing we were talking about in the neutral for the buffering, so I have to do three jabs and by the time three jabs hit them, the charge window is complete. So technically, I'm not even doing anything. Um, I was going to hold down anyway. Basically, you can't miss it. That That is one of the biggest benefits to playing charge characters is their combos are a lot harder to drop because most of the time the charge is given to you because you're going to be doing some kind of crouching attack. 
in the first place. Let's take a look at another example, like DJ's uh, jump in combo. Usually his jump in combo is down heavy, crouch medium. Uh, same thing, the down heavy forces them to stand. So usually the opponent has to be standing for the, his up kicks to hit or else they'll whiff. But with DJ's combo routes, he used down heavy and the down heavy forces them to stand while also being a crouching move. So it's giving you your charge, but you put it all together. It literally, it, it couldn't be more simple. Like once you get the actual timing down, like the hardest part is just getting the link. The charge is literally taken care of for you. Uh, what about more advanced things like drive rush combos? Uh, well, exact same thing. By the time you get to the part where you need to do the charge, it's already gonna be done for you. So now that we've gone over neutral and combos with charge characters, let's go ahead and talk about the last thing, and that is defense. And once again, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but this is another area where I feel a charge character is even easier than a more traditional character. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. So if I'm a traditional character like Ryu, if I'm in trouble, uh, my reversal is a DP, which is forward, down, down, forward, and two punches. So I got to do a whole series of inputs. Not only that, the series of inputs has to be, you know, completely perfect. If I if I mistime it and I don't do it right, I'm going to walk into a button. You see right there, I, I messed it up on purpose. You know, I didn't get it out in time, so I got counter hit. That time I got it out, you know, on time. So there's like a huge timing factor, you know, especially like, you know, when you're in the corner, you need to get it out on just the right frame, that long sequence of inputs. But what happens when I am a charge character? Now with Blanca, my reversal is simply to hold down and then hit up in two kicks. And uh, this is effectively my DP. The down up charge is one of the best reversals you can ever have because if you're blocking, you're almost always going to be holding down back anyway. So that means at any moment, if you see something you don't like, you can even hit up back and two buttons and you'll still get your reversal. This not only means it's way easier to time on your wake up since it's just one series of inputs, but just in general, you basically always have access to a reversal as long as you're blocking. Uh, Shoto characters literally have to stop blocking and press forward in order to get their reversal out, while a charge character can literally continue blocking and then still do their reversal without ever letting go of back. That is a huge, huge benefit. If you've ever fought a Honda ever, I'm sure you've been on the receiving end of one of these. And that's simply due to the fact that at any time while you're blocking, it's just forward and two buttons for an instant get off of me move. And that, once again, is just a huge benefit that really only comes from charge characters. The reason these moves are so strong is because you can't do them instantly. You can't do them while walking forward. But if you actually are holding back, and in blocking situations, obviously you'll be holding back. They're always gonna be ready whenever you need them. And with that, I feel we have covered all the ins and outs of how to play charge characters in Street Fighter VI. Hopefully by now you can see that charge characters really aren't that intimidating. Yes, they're different from, you know, the more traditional characters, but in my opinion, most of the time their differences are a lot easier and there's way more benefits than there are negative so hopefully if you're looking to play a charge character you feel like you have that confidence to do it now that is going to bring us to the end of the video i would appreciate a like if you feel like you learned something or if you enjoyed the video it uh, really helps out a lot uh, i plan to make more street fighter 6 guides in the near future uh, if I forgot something or you have another question, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'll definitely get to it. Also, let me know what's another uh, Street Fighter 6 guide you would like to see. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.